Welcome, respected viewers, to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Although the surface of Mars appears to have been barren and lifeless for eternity, scientists are closely studying the geological and geochemical data from the Red Planet for evidence of it having had a biosphere similar to Earth in the past. Dr. John Brandenburg, a theoretical plasma physicist from the United States, believes that a humanoid civilization once lived on Mars, a theory called the Cydonian Hypothesis. He is one of the authors of Dead Mars, Dying Earth, a book concerning Mars's past and the lessons its history holds for our planet's future. In this second and final part of our interview with Dr. Brandenburg, we continue our intriguing discussion with him about our planetary neighbor. In 1976, the U.S. spacecraft Viking Orbiter 1 recorded images of Mars. One image, taken from a region called Cydonia, has astounded many astronomers, cosmologists, and other scientists, a likeness of the human face on the planet's surface. What's even more amazing is that later additional faces were found in other regions of Mars. Dr. Brandenburg now provides more insight into these phenomena. In your opinion, what is the most profound and significant findings from the Mars research? The fact that we know so much about Mars now says a great deal about the human race, that we are a very curious people who intent on finding truth. I think the most significant thing we have found mm -hmm. basically is the face on Mars because that basically tells you what Mars climate was like for most of its history right there in one statement. One eloquent statement, it says that Mars was alive and had a climate like Earth's for most of its history. So has NASA taken images of Cydonia again in its most recent mission? Uh, yes, they have. And they look just like the old uh, pictures. They look, uh, it's, it, uh, the object is quite eroded. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've seen any archeology, span uh, in the, uh, before it's spruced up, it looks pretty rough because it's old mm -hmm. and uh, it's been eroded. Uh, nature tends to take uh, whatever we make and reduce it to dust <laughs> and gravel. Uh, and the same thing has happened, but we see evidence of uh, details, anatomical details and um, structural details that indicate to me this artificial uh, there are also other faces in Utopia. They've taken a new picture of one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks very much like the face in Cydonia, and it is a face. I think it will be established probably within the next four or five years mm -hmm. that there was and is life on Mars. <laughs> and we will start talking about bacteria, and then they will move on to talking maybe about fish fossils that they have found. By investigating Mars, mm -hmm. we are on a collision course oh, okay. with a life, life and death in the cosmos. Uh, Cydonia is right here in this area. It's right on the shoreline of what would have been the ocean. Uh, what's also interesting is there's a kind of hot spot of radioactivity in this area. So two great disasters happened on Mars, one here, and then this asteroid impact happened here. And Cydonia was right in between them. And that's, that's very puzzling. Why would uh, so many bad things happen in one area of Mars that just happens to have had archeology span in it? In the Cydonian hypothesis, our, the hypothetical Cydonian civilization did not look very advanced. It didn't look like any, uh, they had any level of technology beyond uh, Egypt when it built the pyramids. The occurrence of the radioactive hotspot on Mars in the Mare Acidalium uh, near the Cydonia face, which is to basically to the west of it, and then the Leo impact basin to the east of Cydonia uh, means that 
two tremendous catastrophes on Mars happened in almost the same geologic area, and they basically bracketed Cydonia. So that's, that's very puzzling. One starts to examine various science fiction scenarios for what could have really occurred there. We're like uh, Sherlock Holmes, investigating uh, the scene of some occurrence, wondering why the dog didn't bark. So we continue to look at the Mars um, mystery, and uh, we're very, it's a wonderful thing to be living in this age where we're finally getting the answers to all of these mysteries we used to worry, wonder about. They used to think there were canals on Mars. Well, there weren't any canals, but there are water channels. There's everything on Mars that they actually imagined there was, but it isn't quite the same as they imagined. The famed U.S. astrophysicist Dr. Carl Sagan supported searching for life in the universe. One of his most memorable quotes is, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. Will you share with us some of the outcomes of your interactions with Dr. Carl Sagan? He was very encouraging to us, mm -hmm. simply by being interest, interested. Yeah. And uh, I found him to be an eminent scientist and a very clear scientific thinker. Uh, much of the Sidonian hypothesis owes itself to his questions. Mm -hmm. He basically, uh, by, by his questions and his uh, reasoning back and forth with me, he enabled me to formulate the hypothesis in a much better manner than I otherwise would have. His support was vital in getting NASA to actually take new pictures. When we return, we will hear more from Dr. Brandenburg about the urgent signals nature is sending us that Earth is on course to become like the present day Mars. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality for our program regarding life on Mars and Earth. Dr. John Brandenburg now addresses the connection between the two planets in relation to climate and environment. So how did you conclude that Earth is dying? Well, we are losing biodiversity. One of the signs of health of uh, any ecological system is how many different little ecological niches does it have? Uh, does it has a, have a place for tree frogs? Does it have a place for um, birds mm -hmm. nesting in the trees? How many different types of trees, uh, etc.? And uh, Earth is losing that. Uh, we are going from being a rainbow of color to being just one color, one kind of tree, no tree frogs, one kind of bird, etc. We're losing the different species that have always been part of the Earth, we're losing the fact that Earth was a, is a family of life, and that family is losing members, mm -hmm. and we should be very concerned about that. Uh, however, I remain an optimist. I believe the human race can solve these problems. So what does the relationship of Mars and Earth mean to you as a scientist? And what should it mean to Earth citizens at large? Well, uh, we should be careful with the planet we have, but we should learn as much as possible from the story of life and death on Mars. One of the most chilling scenarios in your book is stated on page 153. It says, the world we know is like the Titanic. Yes. It is grand, chic, high-powered, and it, it is effortless through a frigid sea of icebergs. It does not have enough lifeboats, and those no. that it has will be poorly employed. There's a reason why interest in the Titanic has been revived. It is the exact metaphor for our planet. On some level, we know we are on the Titanic, we just don't know we've been hit. Can you elaborate on that? Well, 
Um, my co-author, Monica Paxson, who's a brilliant woman, uh, and I both ended up thinking about that same analogy uh, simultaneously, and it seemed like such a good metaphor. Um, on the Titanic, there were a whole mixture of passengers, a lot of whom were very poor. When the Titanic didn't, went down, uh, the lifeboats were basically for the rich people. If the Sahara expands into the Seyal, mm -hmm. and even into the Congo Basin, mm -hmm. uh, it will be the poorest in the world who suffer. They will be, have to move to find new places to live. Uh, they will be the ones who will run out of food and uh, because they don't have enough water uh, to raise their crops. Um, the rich societies have power to adjust to changes in climate that poor societies do not. Um, the, a tragic example is the, uh, the impact of the great earthquake in Haiti mm -hmm. versus in Chile. And the economic difference between Chile and Haiti is, is quite, uh, quite large. And you could see that even though the earthquake was much stronger, the uh, Chileans have reacted as a society in a much more organized and functional manner. Order was immediately restored. And uh, so just by extrapolation, if, if the world's climate changes by raising a few average degrees, uh, the Sahara expands, um, various rivers start drying up. Parts of the world be mostly affected by this will be near the equator and um, where life is hard already. I really think that we must do whatever we can to avoid this happening. What is your view of the role of spirituality in connection with the current crisis on our planet? As a Christian, the first commandment is to love our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. And our neighbors, if our neighbors are going to be, suffer great dislocation mm -hmm. because we're burning a lot of fossil fuel, then uh, obviously our religious duty is to change our behavior so that our, our neighbors are not, do not suffer a great dislocation or hardship. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just, that is just the first duty of anyone who wants to act in love towards their neighbor, mm -hmm. which is the great commandment. On behalf of Supreme Master Television and our viewers, we want to thank you for sharing your wisdom with thank us. Thank you so much for coming up and talking to me. All right. Great pleasure. Once again, we express our gratitude to Dr. John Brandenburg for speaking about his in-depth research on Mars and championing the protection of our one and only planetary home. We wish him the very best in his future research endeavors. For more details on Dr. Brandenburg, please visit stardrive.org. Dead Mars, Dying Earth is available at www.amazon.com. Loyal viewers, we thank you for joining us on Science and Spirituality. Words of Wisdom is next, following noteworthy news. May heaven's light always embrace our planet. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss. <laughs>